How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, part 23. Making the reversing lever locking mechanism. This is a very simple mechanism, and before making it, you have to think it through. What you can see me doing at the moment is just turning down a piece of bar stock. This is a small piece of steel that I found in my small pieces of steel box. I don't know where it came from, but it's ideal to make this part. The finished locking mechanism allows you to clamp the reversing lever to the anchor link that hangs down from the steam chest. Which means that the reversing lever can be clamped in any position from full gear forward, full gear reverse and anywhere in between those two points. And the purpose of this is so that you can notch up the engine. If for instance you pull the reversing lever into the centre, the engine will not go in forward or reverse directions, it just won't go anywhere. But this is not the only function of a reversing lever. On a single cylinder engine what you would normally do is put the engine in forward gear, open the steam valve, then give the flywheel a quick push over top dead centre, and the steam engine starts to run. And in this mode the engine is at its most powerful. Because the lever is in full forward gear, the slide valve is fully uncovering the steam ports as the engine is running, and this admits a maximum amount of steam into the cylinder. But once the engine is running, you don't always need this kind of power, so you notch back towards reverse, you move the reversing lever back towards the reverse position, this just means that the slide valve moves less, therefore admits less steam, and so the steam from the boiler is not wasted. The centre position is also useful, it stops the engine from running if the steam valve gets inadvertently opened, and on a model steam locomotive, this is rule one, before raising steam, put the engine in what's called mid-gear. That way, if the regulator's slightly open or leaking, the engine doesn't set off all by itself. And the same is true with full-size steam locomotives. Right, so now we know what we're making, I'm going to continue with the making of it. I've turned this piece of steel down to 3 16 of an inch, and the micrometer verifies this. I now need to thread the end part of this 3 16 diameter steel. In the last episode I discussed the problems of Swarf making a mess of the thread. This is not too bad because it's not stainless steel, it's mild steel, but it's still a good idea to clean out the die before using it. This is the same die I used on the stainless steel and it's cutting a lot more freely. I don't even need to back it off, I can tell that it's cutting freely. And as you can see here, the thread is very cleanly cut. The next part of the operation requires the milling machine. This is the four jaw chuck that lives on the rotary table. And what I'm currently doing is milling some flats down the centre section of the part. And one of the rules of milling, of course, is always make sure that the direction of rotation goes towards the part you're cutting. And that way the sharp edges on the milling cutter can do their stuff. I need to reduce the width of this part of the component to accurately fit in the anchor link, the cast iron part that it's going to be working in. So as I get closer to the finished dimension, I'm being very careful. I'm brushing the swarf away so I can clearly see how much I'm removing and trying the part in place. Once this part of the component is milled to the required dimension so that it slides nice and smoothly up and down the slot in the anchor link, I put it back in the lathe chuck and machine the next part of it. And this is the part of the component that is held against the back of the anchor link and actually holds the lever in place. I'm turning this part to about 5 eighths of an inch in diameter, after which I turn the whole component round in the chuck to remove the rest of the metal that I don't need. Normally for this job I would have used a long piece of bar stock and then I could have parted off the finished component in the normal way. I cut the very last bit off with the hacksaw. And I did this on purpose to show in the video that you can hacksaw in the lathe quite safely. That is, unless the chuck is rotating. Never hacksaw in the lathe with the part spinning round. Now it's time to hold the component by the 3 16 of an inch part, the thin part. So when doing this, remember it's not very well supported, so only take light cuts. I'm not making this part of the component too thin. Because as the reversing lever is clamped in place, this is the part that presses against the back of the anchor link, and if you made it too thin, it would probably bend and distort, and that's not a good thing. In this clip I'm using a needle file to remove the burrs. I'm not making the part smaller so it fits, it fits okay anyway. 
but you can see the burrs on the edge, and I don't like any sharp pieces. And here it is, sliding up and down the slot very nicely. The only minor problem though is it doesn't go to the full extent of the slot, so I put it back in the lathe and using a parting tool I made the centre squared off part smaller. I don't have any video of this part of the operation because I just couldn't get the camera in a position to film it properly. But now the locking mechanism moves the full length of the slot. So that's the most complicated part made. Now I need to make the locking lever. And on the drawing it shows a sort of a almost round locking lever with a tapered arm. So I'll have a go at this. I'm not too thrilled with the idea. I find them very fiddly to get hold of. I much prefer a wheel. To make the domed end of this fitting, it would be really useful to have a ball turning tool, but I don't have one of those. This is a very good turning exercise for beginners. Turning a ball or a ball end like this freehand with a single point tool is not easy. But luckily for me, as a child, I was given a toy called an Etch-a-Sketch for Christmas one year. And if you don't know what an Etch-a-Sketch is, please Google it. Anyway, I used to play with this Etch-a-Sketch all the time. I became quite obsessed with it. Nothing new there then. The idea of an Etch-a-Sketch is you turn two dials on the front and it moves the pointer and all it's really doing is scraping off the aluminium dust that the Etch-a-Sketch is full of from inside the screen. I know this because when I wore it out I took it apart and got aluminium dust everywhere. Anyway, the principle of an Etch-a-Sketch is you turn the two knobs one at a time and you get a vertical line with the left hand one and a horizontal line with the right hand one which is fine until you want to make a circle. So I practiced and practiced until I could make circles that were perfectly circular just by turning these two handles at the correct speed. And to turn a domed end on a piece of bar, the principle is identical. The next thing to make is the lever, and this needs to be tapered. There are a few ways of turning tapers in a lathe. 1. Use a taper turning attachment. 2. Offset the tailstock, not recommended. Or 3. Just change the position of the top slide. So here... I've moved the top slide so that it cuts at an angle and you can see clearly the taper being cut on this piece of quarter inch stainless steel. The angle of the taper is determined by how much you offset the top slide. This one looks about right so I'll clean it up, cut it off and fit it to the ball. Over now to the drilling machine where I'm drilling a hole at an angle to take the lever. And as always, first of all with the centre drill and here I'm using a 1 8 twist drill so I can thread this part for BA. And here's the finished part, but I really don't like it. When I put it on the engine, it looks terrible. So I threw it away. So instead, I'm going to make a hand wheel. And my material of choice for this hand wheel is stainless steel. This particular piece of stainless steel came out of a box that I got from a scrapyard many, many years ago. I don't know what sort of stainless steel it is, but to cut it successfully and get a good finish, you need to run the lathe at high speed and at the same time take a heavy cut. These pieces of stainless steel were just the leftover chucking pieces from an engineering company, and on modern full-size engineering machines, the metal parts are cut at a very high speed and are flooded in coolant, which is not an ideal scenario in a home workshop. Tapping it was a real challenge, but I did it in the end, and here's the part. Whether I use this on the engine, I don't know. It's now 9 o'clock in the morning, and two hours after starting, I've nearly finished editing the video. Once I've uploaded it to YouTube, I think I'll have a quick trip to Blackgates and see what kind of wheels they sell off the shelf. This is a very common problem. As I'm not using the original design of locking lever as shown on the drawing, the extended stud that holds the anchor link gets in the way of the new hand wheel. This was a very easy fix. I just shortened the stud slightly and then I turned down two 2BA nuts. And now the reversing lever can run in the slot the full length of the anchor link. If anything, I think my reversing lever lock is a little bit on the big side. My hands are also a little bit on the big side. If I was going to use this 5A in a steam launch, I would keep this hand wheel. But I think I'll either turn up a smaller one or see what Blackgates have to offer. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.